So now we can look at compasses and there's a whole range on the market and they vary from anything from about five pounds right up to 65 pounds. In general terms you probably get what you pay for. Uh, to me it's a scientific instrument and in winter time in particular you know I believe it, it's a key element to keeping me alive and well. So what we can do now is we can look at some of these more common compasses that are available on the market. So here's one of the sort of cheaper type that you can buy. They're useful maybe as a, as a spare, to be honest, as an emergency. I often will carry one for that purpose, but uh, effectively they're not really what we want to be using out in the hills. Here's another compass. This is a mirror sighting compass. Uh, it is popular with some people, but uh, to my mind it hasn't got a magnifying glass on. Uh, the base plate's a little bit shorter and you can get snow filling into it in the winter. Uh, however, it is popular for people in good weather. You can sight on the things around you and determine what you're looking at on the map. But in poor weather, when we're really navigating, there is no advantage to it. Here's another compass. Uh, this is uh, quite an expensive one. This is £65, but it's my favourite, actually. The, it's got a large bezel to be able to turn even with a pair of gloves on in winter. It's got a fast settling needle. It's very steady and it's got a good sized magnifying glass, which I seem to need these days. And this is the most commonly used compass in the mountains and anyone doing their Summer Mountain Leader Award usually uses one of these. It's the standard Mark IV silver compass. Uh, lots of features on it. It's got a aroma, which is the scales around the edge and includes a 1 to 40,000 scale, which means that it's very compatible with the Harvey maps. It's got a magnifying glass on, which is great um, and a nice easy dial to operate and a good long base plate. All, all, the th all the things you need. It retails probably somewhere around £30. So those are four compasses that are probably most familiar to you. There are other ones you can get which help you plot GPS coordinates. Uh, orienteers will use thumb compasses and there's a range of additional magnifying glasses and uh, pace counting devices you can get as well. So now let's have a look, having chosen our compass, how are we going to attach it to ourselves? Because actually we can make our lives quite difficult or we can make them quite easy. When you buy your compass, it often comes with a red loop of cord like that and people therefore just thread it onto the compass and that's it. Having done that, they then put it over their heads and tend to use it there. This is not really very useful or very effective. You're holding the compass here. It's pretty strange to be trying to do things here with your map. And ideally, when you're really operating in difficult conditions, you tend to hold the compass out in front of you so you can really aim with it. And of course, you can't do that with that short loop on. What people then do is they try and also, if they don't find that works, they'll put it onto their zip here. But it's still a little bit short for some people, so if you've got long arms. Uh, one of my preferred methods is to use the cord as a single strand. I can just use a little clip to put it onto a zip or something like that. And we generally keep our map and compass together in a map pocket here when we're out the hills. The advantage is I can, with it there, I can put it into the pocket there or I can put it down into my pocket here as I feel appropriate. If I'm navigating quite seriously in difficult visibility, I can hold the compass out in front of me like that. So I, I find that's quite a useful method of doing it. Another method I've tried and used sometimes is I've doubled the loop. So that can go right over my head, my arm go through. It means I can use the compass uh, held out in front of me quite comfortably. It'll go into almost any pocket I want to if I want to put it out of the way. And I've got beads on it here just for counting. Every time I cover 100 metres, if I was pace counting, I can slide one up. So if I lose track at some point, I'll know how many I've done. So we've looked there at a range of different methods of uh, attaching the compass to ourselves. As I say, I don't recommend the one straight over the head with a loop, but all the rest, you can choose whatever you like.